It's Switch Day, which means everyone on YouTube is too busy either doing Let's Plays of Breath of the Wild or watching videos of Breath of the Wild or just impatiently waiting for someone to deliver their Switch. I would be in the third category, but while I'm waiting, let's go ahead and get some reviews up for the week, including uh, what I intended to be the week's theme, which is pertinent movie toys for the upcoming line. And I think this being one of the most pertinent, this is Age of Extinction uh, Slug. The Dinobot names got a lot more similar than they used to be, so I'm tr still trying to keep them in my head. So yeah, based on the original G1 Slag, which, thank you UK, we can't call him that anymore, and I apologize to my UK members of my audience where I've just broken my PG rule by explaining all of that. So, his name is Slug now. Not like a, uh, not like a slimy animal. More like a good stiff punch. Or, you know, or in, you know, in the form of, like, artillery. You know, you know, it's just, you know, it, it's not, it's not a bug. It's not the slug. It's not the actual, like, the crawly. You know what I mean. It's not supposed to be the creepy one. Speaking of creepy, he's made of shrapnel, which of most of the Dinobots are. And it actually does lend to the Dinobot design. It's one of the rare times the movie toys... And the movie designs in general, I think, actually suited what they were applied to. Cast in this nice, slightly metallic purple plastic, which is very, very cool. You get a lot of this uh, soft gray stuff for safety reasons, because who oh boy, he is a spiky guy. And then you get some gunmetal gray uh, on over more of his parts. A little, some uh, more solid of the standard gray. All in all... Not a bad color scheme. I do think it's a little bright for something as menacing as this Triceratops, especially with this big flare. This kind of reminds me of like the Universe 1 Energon decos, where it'd be like big bright colors just kind of flashing over the toy itself. It's a little, I don't know, it's a little cartoonish, I think, especially for how mean this guy looks. Cause look at this guy. Look at these big menacing eyes, these super sharp teeth, which I don't think is historically accurate to a Triceratops. So many spikes coming off of him in every direction. This guy just looks like he's there to devastate everything around him. So, this little ball of murder that we have named after a slimy bug is fairly cool looking. I do like that. Uh... I also like the fact that he comes with a little bit of functionality. His jaw does open and close. His hips move around a little bit, not a terrible amount. So the little toes on the, the Triceratops foot. And you get a little bit of uh, motion here in the shoulder and the elbow. So he does have some actual beast mode articulation. I always like that. But then you wonder, what are these massive holes on his side? Like he just got, you know, I don't know, slugged by something. Well... That's for his swords, so he has a place to mount them. Uh, creatively enough, on the inside of these side panels is actually his robot mode hands. So his hands are actually holding his weapons in both modes. I think that's a clever little design detail. What's not so clever is how he uses his swords. He's basically using them like claymores, just sweeping by and just taking things off at the legs. Which is useful... But not the uh, not the coolest looking thing. He looks like he tried to grow wings, which a winged Triceratops is one of the more frightening things I could think of. But for the most part, it's a little bit goofy, and I tend not to use it. So we'll come to robot mode, where I think those swords are going to be just a wee bit more useful. How about how about you? You think that? I think that. So we fold the feet all the way down, flip the legs out, and then. The foot flips out like so. It has big jester toes. So those form nice big solid boots like so. The arms are going to unpeg from the sides of him. And then up here at the top, we have to split the Triceratops head all together in order to uh, get everything situated out to the sides. Now with that out of the way, coming into the back... God, it's been a while since I transformed the toy. Can I actually remember uh, how the back parts are supposed to go? Mm. Actually, I don't want to screw that up. So let's go ahead and flip this out. Flip out the hand. Forward. That gives you your forearms. As for the rest of this. 
All right, looking better. Looking better. All of this folds up too, but it doesn't really seem to do anything. So we just leave it like there. So he has like a spare piece of armor on the tail. You're also going to find little tabs on the sides of his, uh, his abdomen area where his beast mode legs are supposed to tab into. So if I can uh, find that exactly. It's a little bit finicky to transform him. He's got a lot of little tabs and not all of them actually find their home as easily as they should. That's a little bit frustrating with him. But you can find in this case, like, I'm having a difficult time just even seating this one in. There we go. With that done, I believe we have our finished robot mode for Slug. Looking quite awesome. I always really like the look of these guys. Like, again, like I said, the movie design just kind of uh, works on them. Now, go ahead and fold that down so we... Yeah, because it's supposed to have a little bit more color to the robot mode. Well, that works out well enough. So yeah, he makes pretty, pretty awesome robot. And again, that movie aesthetic just kind of works for the Dinobots. They should look brutal, and they should look very spiky and ready to kill anything upon the slightest touch. Taking a look at the head, you can see a very traditional knight's helmet. There's a little bit of a blue light in there. A little bit of blue coloring so you can see a visor eye where you can actually see out. But beyond that, you know, it is a rather standard and traditional European helmet. Well, I assume European. I'm not quite good at this. It's a design that's meant for, I believe, jousting because it's supposed to glance off of the neck there without actually taking your head off, which is kind of a useful thing when you're a jouster. But still, I actually kind of like this juxtaposition of, like, the European... Uh, elements of the Dinobots kind of gives them this unified look and a theme amongst uh, amongst the movie Transformers without just being like oh the ones that become dinosaurs which is a kind of cool thing he's got a good proportions in this mode too his shoulders are big and powerful looking big spiky details uh, big forearms big lower legs this guy looks like a bruiser and well when you're covered with that many spikes you better be able to to beat things up, or at the very least look like it, because this is a very menacing look to pull off, and he pulls it off fairly well. I do like all the details going on into the chest. Lots of little spikes again. He is a very spiny guy all the way through. Very vaguely bone-like in some areas, like little here, like the ribs. Not a whole lot in the way of paint. We pretty much got most of that here on the what were shoulders and now these back spines of the robot um, yeah that's all silver paint to the actual front a little bit of silver on the head and the blue in the eyes a little bit of red here and that's pretty much it Autobot sigil on his arm at least so you know where his loyalties lie that's something so yeah he mostly gets his job done in plastic which I tend to prefer less chipping less scratching that always works he still carries some of that big bright flash of a uh, red though that's a little it's a little bit distracting especially since there's nothing to bring that color down to the lower part of him it's I don't know it's it's kind of weird all being like all clustered up there at the top it's just a a wee bit strange I think uh, he's not terribly bad though not terribly bad uh, I can go into articulation you know there's not a whole lot to speak of so we might as well go into that his neck, a little bit stiff on mine. Looks like his ball joint is a little bit, yeah. You can see, like, mm. you can see his ball joint might be just a, a wee bit off. Because he won't hold a position, but should it work, it actually uh, does have a decent amount of range to it. God, it's almost like it's a feature, isn't it? <laughs> okay, how about the articulation that actually works? You're going to get a little bit of restriction around the shoulder because of all this extra arm stuff, but for the most part, it works pretty well. And I do like that uh, the big forearms, despite being like shells folded over, stay pretty solid when you move them around. That's a good thing. And then you get the rest, wrist bending inward if you need it. Waist articulation. Oh, how I miss ye. And on guys who uh, use swords for posing, that's the kind of extra point of articulation I really need. We have perfect... Uh, range here in the thighs goes in all directions pretty easily you get the thigh swivel as well as a pretty good knee bend the transformation joint does like to come undone here but you can use it as a double knee if you really need that for your posing and you do have a range of posing here in the front toe too which should help with stability if you need it 
For the most part, though, his big feet also mean he's got plenty of range or uh, plenty of balance for all that range of articulation. He's got big, solid chunk parts, too, so that's actually a really good thing to have. Also, like a lot of these new, newer figures and kind of started around this time, he does have a hexagon peg that works with most standard display stands, either domestic or foreign. Uh, Tamashi stage, probably a Figma stage works, too. Anything that has that little, like, 3 millimeter stem should work. So, beyond that, we have the swords that can now mount in his hands. Well, again, but here they make a little bit more sense. Looking quite good. I think dual swords is probably a pretty appropriate weapon for a Triceratops, going from the horns to the blades. And I actually kind of like how each blade has that little divide in it, so it kind of gets that two-horned look across. Even though he's not a two-horned Triceratops, he's, uh, he's got a lot of horns going on for him. Still... I like this. Uh, I like the look of the swords. Again, they are very flexy plastic, so no harm to the child, and they work well enough. I like the look. I think it completes them pretty well. That, my friends, is Age of Extinction Slug. Yes, I'm still getting those names confused. Uh, I think it works really well. His his uh, beast mode could stand a tab together a little bit better, but beyond that. Uh, Nice transformation. There's some clever bits here and there. I really, really like the look and molding for his robot mode. He's got a very powerful appearance to him. And I do like the overall theme of the Dinobot and the medieval look. The only downside I would have to say is I think his color scheme is a little bit too bright. There's just something about the purple and the red that doesn't quite work for me. And that's a preference thing. But I feel it's just a little bit too cartoony for how menacing his design is could potentially be and you've seen that in the darker repaints in Japan as well as the upcoming version for the last night that's been done in more of a bronze color and I think those colors look and work way better on the mold than this so if you missed out on it the first time I don't think you're going to do too bad going with the brand new version of him 